Good morning, Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Um, we're just, uh, let's see, what is today? Today's Tuesday, and we're just, this coming Sunday is the first day of school, and so we're getting stuff done and getting stuff uh, ready to go. But I wanted to put out another video this morning. I've had a lot of requests over months about, Dwayne, what would you carry in your saddlebags on the trail? And so that's what I want to address this morning. Now, um, I did a video many months ago on, uh, on saddlebags. And I'll try to get a link to that video in the description of this one. I just got these in. I've had these, this brand, this exact style model of saddlebags for several years. I've had three or four pairs. Usually my boys wound up with them. Uh, or something, you know, wind up selling them or uh, so I just got another pair in and if you want a good size set of saddlebags um, for on the trail that are not made out of Cordura or canvas um, I highly recommend these. They're made by Triple K uh, Triple K leather and they took the blueprints from original US Calvary saddlebags uh, and built these on that. And I've been using them for years and I like them. So when I'm on the trail, people will ask, Dwayne, if you're on the trail, what do you carry? Well, we're gonna look at some possibilities today. Um, there's not a hard set um, deal list. Sometimes the terrain is different. Sometimes the climate is different. The season time is different. There's different things, but these are some things um, that are pretty well across the board that I will probably carry depending and so some of this this is not what I carry every time but these are different options and there's a lot of different things there's a lot of different options for you these are just some that you can think about that you might file away to help you for later first off what am I carrying on me well I got I got my buck 110 on me okay that stays there and uh I have my uh, lighters for my cigars, so I've always got fire starter, got my cigar cutter, and a little pocket knife, uh, which I usually keep around. Uh, I will have a firearm on me uh, pretty well most of the time. Now my firearm these days of choice, uh, and this is gonna come as a surprise to some of you, uh, I've actually, I'm carrying a Glock 20 SF in the 10 millimeter now. Um, the Glock does not trip my hammer, does not make my heart go pitter-patter like the 1911 or a, or a good single action, but the 10 millimeter round is extremely effective in uh, back country in the north, in, like in the northwest with bears and stuff. Um, or you can load it, you know, for the two-legged variety of varmints. So, with the Glock 20 SF, I have 15 rounds of, of 10 millimeter. It's lightweight. It's, you know, it's polymer. I'm sorry, but it is. I don't have to worry if it rains uh, while I'm out there. I don't have to worry about it. And, uh, and so, so I'll have that. I'll probably have a bigger knife along with the Buck 110. This is usually what I'll have. I had a fella years ago make this for me, the blade. I, I designed the blade and everything, the, the shape and the size, but this is my favorite size and style of a camp knife. The blade on this one was made out of a corn harrow, so it's extremely high carbon steel, which I prefer. And uh, it's full tang, which I prefer for the strength and the weight. And uh, the scales on it are actually caribou horn I got while I was in Alaska. So I'll have a little bit bigger knife I mean, I have bigger knives, but it's mostly it's not necessary. But if I need to, uh, if I'm out there and I need to baton through some uh, some firewood or something split, and I want something a little heavier, I'll have that. Now you're going to want in the south or in the north or wherever you're probably going to want water. Um, but I don't always take water because. I can take coffee all right um, if it's rainy if it's wet if it's windy and it's cold I'm gonna have water but it's gonna have coffee grounds boiled in it all right so but take something to drink 
all right you always want to have something to drink whether you're just trail riding around local around home uh, or you're up in the mountains uh, up in the northwest have something to drink with you okay um, people worried about food if you're going to be out all day now you can take Let's, let's stop and make a point of this. Let, let's, let's stop for a minute. You don't have to have a three course meal that will fill you up to the point that you are bloated and distended and in a food, co food coma every time you eat. Food is fuel, okay? And on the trail, you need food that'll just cut the edge off of hunger, keep your energy up, and that's it. You don't need a saddlebag with a giant hero sandwich um, and those little tiny bag of Dorito chips and two Diet Cokes for lunch. You don't need it, okay? Just just keep the hunger at bay till you get back to the truck. Now you can do stuff simple. You can you can get your summer sausage and you got a knife. You better have a knife. Uh, you should have a knife. And, uh, I mean, you can eat that, but I have something better that I prefer. This morning, Mama made breakfast. And we've done this for years. Like, when I've got a big ride, she'll make biscuits and sausage, and then she'll make extra, and I'll wrap them up put them in my saddlebags. And I'll have a couple of these. So this morning she made sourdough biscuits and sausage patties. And then when we got done with breakfast, after they cooled so that they don't condensate, wrap them up and drop them in your saddle bag. All right? You don't, you don't need the snack packs. You don't need, you just don't need all that stuff. All right? Uh, now there's been many a times out I've been out and I've taken another thing you can do is I've taken a can of uh, soup, just Campbell's soup, uh, build a little fire and heat that Campbell's soup up. Now I guess I'm behind the times. They tell me that Campbell's soup these days, those cans are lined inside and you can't, you're not supposed to use them on the fire. I don't, that's what they tell me. I don't know. You need to look into that. Um, probably the most important thing in my saddlebags that I take, and this is whether I'm just going on three or four hours here on the trail or I'm going you know I've done 28 miles in Alaska in a day uh, one thing I'll always have I'll always have the paperwork I always take the paperwork all right um, and if I'm riding with several people I'll take the whole roll and put it in there because I guarantee there's a lot of people that don't even think about bringing it now some of your your purists to say take that cardboard roll out of there because that saves on weight like that cardboard roll weighs anything and you can flatten it down but that cardboard roll if you need a little help starting a fire you've got some dry paper in there just a little bit of added leave that in there i'll have my cigar case regardless um with a couple of cigars on the trail i'll probably have a charter oak and uh, and a brick house maduro in case I want to go a little lighter or a little darker, um, but I won't have like a real expensive cigar, uh, but I'll have that in there. So the other thing I usually keep in my bag is a can of Sterno. Now Sterno is a cooking fuel, it's a paste. Uh, if you've gone to a, like a wedding or something where they, the caterers come in and they have the pans with the food and they, they have these little cans underneath to keep them hot, uh, that's what these are. There's been a lot of times, especially in Alaska, in Wyoming, um, where the weather's just been really wet and uh, soggy, and uh, this has really pulled my fat out of the fire to have this. Uh, <clears throat> there's the idea, some of the folks, that cowboying means you have to do, you got to rub two sticks together or the whole persona of cowboying is you got to use a flint or you've got to do this listen cowboying is getting the job done that's what cowboying is get the job done and uh and if the job is not freezing to death if i've got a five gallon can of gas and a road flare 
uh, and I'm freezing to death or somebody else is, and I, you're darn right I'll use it. Uh, I won't sit there and shiver and carry on because I've got to prove something because I need to pull out my cowboy cred card and show it to somebody to prove that I'm the real deal. Um, do what needs to be done. That's what it's about. It's about getting the job done. Okay? Uh, I mean, do you really think that the cowboys and the mountain men in the old days, if they had access to this, they wouldn't use it? Do you think when they invented the Lucifer matches, those newfangled Lucifer sofa matches that came out, do you think the cowboys turned their nose up at that and said, no, I'm going to use a flint and steel because that's not the cowboy way? Don't be an idiot, all right? Get the job done. Keep a keep some kind of leatherman tool. All right, some kind of leatherman tool. If you carry it on your belt, that's great. And a flashlight. All right. This flashlight is from back in my Alaska law enforcement days. It's a Streamlight Protect 2L. I've had it for a long time. It's super tough. Would I recommend this flashlight? No, I would not. Is it a good flashlight? It's an excellent flashlight. Has it served me well? It's served me tremendously. If you were looking to go buy a flashlight, would I say go buy this flashlight? Nope, I would not. Uh, if I were looking for another flashlight, would I go buy this one? Nope, I would not. Why? Because this flashlight uses these C123 batteries. Okay? It doesn't use A batteries or double A's or triple A's. Uh, it uses these lithium C123 batteries. You can't find these everywhere, and when you do find them, you got to give blood to be able to pay for it. They're extremely, stupidly expensive. Uh, when I bought this flashlight years ago, they weren't that bad. I've got another flashlight in there um, that's a Surefire. That's like, it's um, like 1,200 lumens. I mean, it, it's, it's just incredible. I paid a lot of money for it again when I was in law enforcement, but it uses those batteries. Get a good, small, carryable flashlight. Uh, keep it around and uh, but get something that you can afford uh, the batteries to uh, to keep it charged okay so and then if I'm out in if it's going to be the chance of inclement weather and I'm a long ways out in the middle of nowhere a lot of times I will carry one of these uh, it's a uh, it's just one of those uh, emergency reflective so it's like a breathable heat reflector sleeping bag, okay? Um, and uh, I was in uh, Alaska several years ago and we went for a ride. It was a 28 mile ride. We started out, this was in July, and it was warm, it was sunny, we were all in our shirt sleeves. Uh, if you've ridden much in, in uh, South Central Alaska down on the Kenai Peninsula, uh, we were going up over Devil's Pass. If anybody's out there, if you know where that is, we went up. We were south of Cooper Landing. We picked up the trailhead south of Cooper Landing and went in, in the interior and around and up over Devil's Pass. By the time we got halfway and was heading up over the pass, there was like a 20 mile an hour wind blowing uh, and it was raining mixed with sleet and snow and it was freezing. Now, we knew we lived in Alaska for a while. We knew that that was a possibility. So I had a slicker. I had a night. I had a good heavy wool sweater and a coat low on my slicker tied on my saddle. So we had the gear. We were still miserably wet and cold when we got to the end of the trailhead where the horse trailer was, but we had the gear. But if a horse had gone lame, if, if something had happened out there, there was there was no shelter all right there was no way we were going to build a fire there was nothing um we'd have just been sitting there and i mean what we did was we stayed on the horses we wrapped everything up turned our collar up and just hunched our back to it and just and just kept riding but if we had gotten stopped in any way we'd have been in a we'd have been in a really bad shape and something like that will save your life now, if you're in North Carolina or you're in Tennessee or you're in Florida and you're going out for three or four hours, you probably don't need that. But it's just something to keep in mind, something to keep in mind, okay? Now, there are some of you that are sitting there looking at this. You say, Dwayne, there's no first aid there. No, there's not. Um, 
I never carry first aid stuff. Now that's going to come as a shot. You say, Dwayne, for you or for the horse? Yeah. Listen, here's a reality about a horse. First aid for a horse in the mountains. If a horse is hurt bad enough that they require, I didn't say could use, I said they require first aid treatment from you, they're probably hurt so bad that first aid treatment from you is not going to do them any good. All right? Now they can, like, you know, get a scrape, cut their leg on a, you know, their fetlock on a rock, you know, a sharp rock on the trail, get a scratch on a stob coming out, get a bee sting, get something like that. They, you don't need to carry wonder dust and fur zone and everything in your saddlebag for that. Horses are tough and they'll be just fine, all right? Uh, if it's something worse, if they get colic, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to put a gallon of olive oil in your saddlebag with a big long tube? No. Um, if they eat, like we lost, worked for an outfit there in Alaska, and they, uh, they went out on a trip, and they lost three or four horses on that trip. They had stopped to graze beside of a branch there in Alaska, and they got in, the horses got into poison hemlock. And there's no first aid you can take to help with that. All right, um, and so I don't I don't use I don't use uh, up the space in my saddlebag and the weight in the saddlebag for that because it's just not necessary. And what about for me? I don't for me either. I mean, if I need to wrap something up, I'll have something to wrap up. Um, if I get stung by a bee, I get stung around here, and, and you just keep going. You know, I'm not going to carry band aids. Uh, I'm not going to carry Benadryl now if you if you need an EpiPen because you're allergic to stuff, you know, do what you need to do. That, that's just me. I don't. Um, and uh, so these are just some ideas in the saddlebag. Modify it according to your needs. Modify it according to your terrain. Modify it according to your weather. Uh, modify it according to your horse, to your tastes. Um, and... Uh, but just know that there is a balance between what we need and what we want. And you have to find your balance. Okay, we need food, all right, but we want a big hero sandwich. But we just need food. Find that balance. Do we need cigars? Well, you probably don't, but I probably do, all right? And so need or want, well, okay, there you go. You work your way through and uh, just listen, be logical, be reasonable, be safe, and have fun. All right? Now, I'm sure you guys have watched this little Dickens run around through the whole video. I'll just come here, buddy. I'll just go ahead and introduce you. Oh, Waylon. Say hi, Waylon. This is Waylon of Dry Creek Wrangler School. Every ranch needs a healer dog, so we got us a red healer, and uh, so he's learning his way around, and he's already taking control of the place, all right? So those of you coming to the school, you'll meet Waylon when you get here. He'll meet you, and uh, hope you guys have a good day. We'll catch you next time.